Basically, for those folks who don't know who I am, I've been doing congressional and senatorial investigations uh, for uh, uh, probably 20 years, basically chasing corrupted persons in our government. Uh, and that's started out a long time ago. I won't go into all of the background of how I got involved with that, but I became a federal witness in uh, that 1985-87 period of time with the Iran-Contra inquiries, for those of you that are old enough to uh, recall that, as a matter of fact, because that's been about 25 years ago, I guess, at this time. And uh, I had gotten mixed up into the middle of uh, Iran-Contra Central Intelligence uh, supplying of weapons and drugs, et cetera, et cetera, with, uh, by simply merging my company with a, an existing company in Atlanta, Georgia, that in fact was uh, a covert front for supplying of weapons for all these uh, random wars that the intelligence agencies of the United States like to maintain worldwide and of course lining the pockets of all those guys that are supplying the weapons on the behalf of our uh, uh, what I refer to the secret government so to speak has nothing to do with the the people that you think are running uh, old uh, the United States and uh, it's um, uh, so th that's been a real roller coaster coaster ride for myself what happened was that I was uh, uh, like I say, we merged our company. All of a sudden, I was in the middle of this stuff, and um, uh, I couldn't believe what was going on. These guys, including major generals, et cetera, coming in and out of my company, which, by the way, was a toy company. And the idea was for them to use the toy company as a covert front for all this crazy stuff that they're doing on a regular basis. And... Uh, to my surprise, once we got uh, into investigating it, myself and my lawyer uh, in an attempt to reclaim my business, uh, which they had basically um, taken over and completely stolen, uh, when I got into it, we found out that they do this stuff all the time, uh, that they actually will take companies over and, and use them as reasons for being in visiting a country or going in and out of countries, et cetera, et cetera, and, and uh, carrying out their uh, supplying of the weapons and all. So if you guys have any questions, I would, I would uh, jump in, please, if you will, if you have uh, anything you want to ask. But uh, the main point of uh, today's program uh, on my side of it is to uh, let people know that there is an extremely radical element that is uh, is, is on the offing, uh, and that is uh, Planet X, which is, of course, and some people call it Nibiru. Uh, a couple of years ago, about three years ago, after doing 25 to 27 years of inv investigations into government fraud and theft and, and uh, all of the related bandits that uh, are running the country up there uh, and being involved directly with about eight or ten of some of the biggest investigations in the last uh, 20 years, uh, I realized that we were missing huge amounts of money, much more money than what is normally vanishing out of Washington, D.C., into the pockets of those guys that are on the bad side of the fence. Uh, we had gotten used to chasing multi-million dollars of um, financing that, uh, and fraud, fraud, bank fraud, uh, and like I say, the sales of weapons and the exchange for weapons out of, right out of the White House uh, with, uh, for, with, with drug dealers on a huge scale. And we got used to investigating that, but all of a sudden it dawned on me that uh, we were starting to lose much more money, and I couldn't figure out how that money could, uh, where it could go, because we're talking trillions of dollars, not even millions or billions, but a couple of uh, major persons in our government had admitted that trillions had disappeared out of their budgets 
and they had no idea where it was going. You guys there? Are you yeah, guys yeah, still yeah. on the line there, or you fall asleep? Yeah, sorry. I lose that. you. Guys. No, oh. I had my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I was trying to talk. I was yeah. like, wait a second, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. so, I, 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 I didn't mean... Man, keep going. Excuse me? Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, how... It, uh, I guess to what level is this still going on today? I mean, um... okay. Well, here's here was here is the point. This is what happened uh, about uh, this about three years ago uh, when it when I had information coming across my desk as it related to this giant sums of money vanishing. Uh, again, uh, not you know no no longer were we talking about a senator or a congressman pulling off some kind of a, a, a scam one way or another to, uh, to get a couple million bucks for his summer house in Tahiti or something like that. Uh, we were looking at, uh, uh, to, to my shock, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, who was in charge of the Defense Department at this particular point in time, on the day before the 9-11 event took place, he came, uh, he was sitting answering questions before a congressional committee with whom I had done work, and uh, he said that over the last few years, it's been realized that $2.3 trillion had vanished from the Defense Department budget. It's just unaccounted for. You know, and we're talking with a T, trillion dollars. And that's mind-boggling, uh, you know, because oh, yeah. you can't, uh, I mean, you can't, you can't even money launder a trillion dollars. How would you ever even do that? Uh, you know, if it was a, just a regular theft of, like I say, of a few million, that's one thing. But uh, for 2.3 trillion to vanish out of their budgeting at the Defense Department is like a, a mind-boggling. And they're also talking about the timing here. Now, this was the day before the 9/11. Uh, right. The event with okay. So I was just going to ask, did, right? Yeah, right, and so obviously, we we never heard that story again. I mean, uh, you know, we have it on videotape of him doing this. Uh, uh, you know, admitting that they uh, that they lost uh, a couple of trillion dollars, but of course, the next day was nine eleven. End of story. We never heard it again, and we were occupied, of course, with um, uh, all of the aftermath of uh, the. Um, the the, uh, the we'll call it a terrorist event. Uh, I actually I won't get into that tonight, but I'm I'm sure it was not a, an outside terrorist event, but that it was probably a uh, uh, what we call a false flag operation right. carried out by some of our own corrupted persons in government here. But uh, what, as a matter of fact, coincidentally again, and I say that word uh, completely in a joking manner. Uh, the missile that what they called, they told us it was an airplane, but the missile that went into the side of the Pentagon uh, was right into the building area where all of all of the paperwork for this vanished two point three trillion dollars would have been held. That yep. I guess was rather also kind of coincidental. So that was all gone anyhow. I guess if anybody was going to try to uh, look into it, they would have a hard time doing that. Right. Yeah, just use a so, missile to destroy the evidence, sure. You know, so I'm sitting here and I'm looking and I see, uh, you know, like, you know, what what's going on with the, with that kind of money disappearing? In uh, Then uh, uh, the lady who was theoretically in charge of oversight with the Federal Reserve she had uh, sat before the Congress a short time later and uh, said that uh, somebody brought it up. One of the congressmen asked her what was the story uh, behind the fact that there's been $9 trillion, again, $9 trillion with a T, that seemingly is off the books and misplaced relative to some loans and money that was put into from our Federal Reserve here in the United States, lent out to the European banks. It's nine trillion that had vanished. And then following that up, or running almost side by side, we had uh, uh, Representative Ron Paul had stepped forward 
and he had said, uh, uh, went to the um, Federal Reserve and said, there's too much information indicating that all the gold is gone from Fort Knox. Yep. You know, and uh, he said, uh, we, we want to request on the behalf of the Senate and the Congress and the American people a complete audit on the gold. Well, the Federal Reserve System, which was set up so many years ago, was specifically set up in a manner such that the Senate and the Congress and the United States citizens have no right whatsoever to ever request an audit. It was specifically set up that way. Uh, so yep. the, Fed, the, the Federal Reserve, which has nothing to do with the United States government, that comes to a big surprise for a lot of people, but the Federal Reserve is a group of private banks that oversees and runs and controls all of the funding of the United States government, as well as oversees the Fort Knox gold inventory. All right, and they are private banks. It is not a division of the United States government officially, period. End of story. And so when they set it up to be the people that did control the bankers, that did control all of our money and financing, et cetera, uh, they set it up specifically. So they told Ron Paul and senators and congressmen to just get out of their face and go away because they weren't even going to talk to them. They had no right to even ask questions. Mm -hmm. Now, so I'm sitting here uh, with uh, starting, uh, again, uh, I hit about uh, oh, eight or nine months at that time into looking into where all this money was going. And I couldn't imagine my wildest dreams uh, where, what, what could go on with that. You just can't, you know, you can't load that up and take it someplace. Uh, like I say, you can't money launder trillions of dollars. Uh, so uh, I, I then, of course, had received, constantly receiving information from people all over the uh, different levels of our government and friends of mine out of the intelligence agencies and what have you. And uh, this going back, uh, you know, a full over 25 years. And uh, uh, someone came to me and, uh, and reminded me of the underground facilities that were being built all the same period of time. By the way, the, the funny stuff started seriously about 1983 to 85, which was a period of time when we were into that Iran-Contra stuff. Uh, Ronald Reagan had was president. George Bush, who was really running the show, was vice president. And uh, all of this uh, a lot of changes in huge projects, Defense Department money. They were talking about doing this uh, Star Wars initiative where they're going to put up this a whole bunch of series of satellites that was going to track uh, when a flea farts in Omaha. They would, could tell you where the flea was located and all that kind of stuff. And they were going to track everything that the Russians or the Red Chinese were going to do. They were going to be able to track it down and all of that. That was all this uh, Star Wars uh, gobbledygook, um, which I found out later what everything that they did put up in the Star Wars uh, operations, these telescopes and satellites uh, and transmission uh, uh, sensing devices and all of that were actually aimed outwards. They were not aimed at the Earth to keep track of things that were aimed outward to outer space. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, like I say, it also was a time when they, they started doing what was called um, the continuity of government. They had yes. huge expansions of what was called continuity of government. And that was where these underground facilities got, came, came back to surface. All right. So what we're talking about in terms of uh, these, uh, uh, there's over a hundred of them in the United States today, and these are entire, uh, oh, st small cities, so to speak, underground, all over the place in in America, uh, and uh, they are specifically survival survival locations and facilities for a limited numbers of people. 
uh, although with a hundred of them, and some of them are pretty large, uh, there a lot of people could be underground and live under there for quite a while. Um, so at that point, uh, and and I was really at very much up up to speed on these, so to speak, because going back to the 90s, I had myself uh, with a, a friend of mine snuck down under uh, the Denver airport, which for many years had been rumored to be uh, a, a huge underground operation, a huge facility like we're talking about. And on the uh, very first week that it was opened in 1995, uh, I had already been bombarded with people telling me what was going on underground there. And, and I didn't even understand it, couldn't imagine really at that point what they were talking about. Uh, why would we be building giant uh, underground like uh, like rats and moles under the ground uh, uh, at a tremendous cost factor? So I did sneak down underneath and I got pictures um, way back in the 90s, uh, but that was something I, I was involved with uh, investigations with Sonny Bono uh, on drugs and uh, smuggling right out of the White House and investigating it with him uh, and uh, two or three other people. I was working with Henry Gonzalez on some other bank fraud things that we were uh, trying to chase at that time. So these crazy pictures of underground facilities was something that I had just put on the back shelf and, and hadn't gotten into in terms of trying to find out what was really going on. So uh, I, I then moved into a, a, a situation where I'm trying to figure out uh, what would it be that would cause us to, to be so concerned with the need for underground survival facilities at a tremendous cost. So someone said to me, how about the stuff that's going on in China and in Russia and uh, Red China and in uh, England, uh, the Europe, a couple of European countries at the same time? And I said, well, you know, what are you talking about? And they said, no, the underground, same situation, underground hideouts. So apparently the Russians... 2010 put out a mandate of their own that they were going to create 5,000 underground facilities, not big ones like we have in America, but 5,000 of them, and a couple of them were going to be big, and some of them were, a couple of the larger ones had already been underway for a while, and they were going to have these accomplished by the end of 2013, coming into 2000, the first of 2014. And I checked into it and I found out that they had, in fact, completed it, that they did have 5,000 of these facilities as uh, shelter survival locations for many thousands of people. So now what we had is uh, the Russians doing it, the same thing being done in Europe in several different countries, the Red Chinese had gone and started converting what was a couple of thousand underground tunnel facilities that literally had been in China going back a thousand years. They're back in the old days of antiquity. They used to fight wars by running in and out of these underground uh, tunnels uh, back when they were st still doing bows and arrows and throwing rocks at each other, but they had a lot of them started already, thousand of them. Uh, so the Red Chinese had gone in and updated those and completed them the same as we had in the United States here uh, for our 100 and 103 or whatever we have here. So uh, then so I do really... They, uh, yes. Do they uh, need a seed bank for this? Because I recently read that uh, Russia was building a seed bank for all life on Earth. Well, uh, actually, the re now I'm not dead positive on Russia, but uh, there is one that was built back in 2006. It's a huge international seed bank, which actually oh, you have wow. to equ 
you have to eat. And by the way, this is cooperatively done by um, uh, the United States and several other nations cooperatively. Uh, and a lot of, um, uh, excuse me, I was going to say a lot of the um, uh, funding came from uh, not only, of course, just they steal it whenever they want money, they just steal it out of the covert black operations. Anyhow, the, nobody's allowed to look at it, so it's pretty easy money. But the, a good amount of that money was supplied by, um, uh, what's his name, the computer, uh, uh, the uh, the fellow and his wife that's so wealthy from the computer's um, Bill success. Gates. Bill Gates, I'm sorry, slipped his name. Bill Gates put in a lot, uh, donated millions and millions of dollars just into that one seed bank, and I believe it's located in Denmark, actually. Now, there are two or three other locations uh, of uh, seed banks. Um, basically, what these are uh, are what you would call um, storage facilities to maintain um, the seeds necessary to replant the entire face of the earth when it's totally wiped out. That's basically the essence of it, to, to have the seeds necessary after some type of a total wipeout of the globe uh, and to um, uh, actually uh, have the seeds to replant everything necessary like Noah's Ark to regenerate the growing of all the products and plants and trees and everything when they've been wiped out from a global disaster. Now, there's, um, again, as I say, this, this one uh, that I think is in uh, Denmark, near Denmark, there's um, uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Iceland are, are all uh, uh, donating in terms of maintaining it. Uh, that's a large, uh, pretty, pretty big facility. Uh, the um, the one that one I think originally was uh, I don't remember it was something like uh, uh, twenty million dollars to get off the ground. Uh, they had millions millions of seeds in there as we speak. It's pretty well completed. It was started two thousand six and it's done as we speak. Okay, so that's that adds to it. Uh, see now we so we have uh, these couple of giant seed vaults. We have all the major nations of the world secretly, not, not, not tremendously secret, but uh, for the most part pretty much secret, building these underground facilities now, and, and filling them, by the way, for the last five years, filling them with the freeze-dried uh, survival foods by the thousands of tons, oh. truckloads after truckloads. And we're talking, by the way, these facilities, I'm going to just back to the United States, their facilities that we, we've, they've created uh, are uh, so huge that they have 18-wheelers, uh, 40-footers, drive side-by-side side in the roadways underground, and complete railways, which are actually magnetic, levitated railways, interconnecting Mm -hmm. Many of the facilities from one state to another, traveling at the, the trains are traveling at uh, uh, 400 to 500 miles an hour. They're magnetic, levitated, nothing touched the tracks. They're like the good ones that they have in Japan that they have already installed above ground, traveling at 400 miles an hour. Uh, but the ones down under uh, in the uh, underground facilities are even faster there's absolutely no way for them to wreck, so to speak. There's nothing on the tracks, nothing crosses the tracks. And uh, when, they, when you get in it to go to another location, they just seal the doors like, like a, a subway in New York City, close the doors, you sit down, belt yourself in, and it just goes swoosh. And uh, again, it's up to 500 miles an hour in a few seconds, and then they slow down and you get out at your next location. Uh, these, the, the construction of these underground facilities has been done with gigantic drills that are mind-boggling. And by the way, the Chinese have bigger ones than we do, 
and the ones that we have, the smallest ones, can go in through the side of a mountain. They travel six or seven miles an hour, digging literally like drilling a huge hole. Yes, sir. You're cutting off there, buddy. Oh, I am? Okay. Yeah, just for okay, it seems to be better. I heard it, it, am I okay, okay now? Maybe it was me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh, your head yeah, is I've cutting off. Yeah, I've seen those uh, drills you're talking about, and it had an Air Force logo on it. I, I don't know. I think they were in Nevada, but yeah, they were drilling underground with this just big drill. Well, this this well, all they, completely reminds me of that Ozarks from that uh, Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory episode. That's crazy. Yeah, yes, Jesse's. That by the way, the, and Jesse went into. One location there, very you know, a li- for a little bit uh, underground. Uh, it is in the Ozarks, the one you're talking about. Um, uh, that it, it's slick. What they did was they that's been there. That one has actually been there for for a few years, and it's been uh, uh, labeled as a an underground general storage area. But when they're ready to uh, uh, to utilize it uh, the way they're planning to utilize it, along with uh, the the rest of them, uh, it will be, you know, full time uh, as a survival living facility for the limited few. Um, I have I have finished doing. It took me three years of my investigation on this alone. Now I have to say something out in front because I had dealt with Senate and congressional. Uh, leaders for so many years, and I literally was a federal uh, witness. I have testified personally before the United States Senate Intelligence Committee in Washington, D.C. One of my huge reports that I did, uh, I believe, is what got Sonny Bono murdered on the ski slopes because we were 15 days away from opening up a congressional investigation into drugs, drug smuggling, and weapons supplies out of Washington, D.C., connected to the uh, intelligence community. Right, it would be the we CIA, had, like they say. They, they Absolutely. They had contacted us. I'd worked with Sonny, supplied him with uh, an amazing array of information uh, for about a year, he had called me, uh, his office has contacted me about December the 15th or something like that, and they said, we are all set to go. Sonny and the rest of the Congress is going on their Christmas holiday. The first thing we're doing back here in Washington, and by the way, I was living in Los Angeles at that time. They said the first thing we're doing after the Christmas holidays when Sonny gets back, we have the investigation ready to start. We wanted to make sure that you were prepared to come into Washington and, and move forward with us on it. I told them I was excited to do it. I was ready to do it. Let's go, because we had fooled around with this thing for over a year in terms of just setting it up. Uh, and the investigation was not only going to be a congressional inquiry, but it was going to be with subpoena powers. And normally they never do that, and they don't permit it, because what happens, then you have some senators and congressmen that are carrying out these different inquiries with the ability to force government persons to answer the question, do you know anything about drugs coming into our Air Force bases? Do you know anything about this picture that Mr. Fletcher supplied us, which is a motion picture of uh, the delivery of narcotics on a United States aircraft and being offloaded at air bases at the Homestead Air Force Base? Are you familiar? And with subpoena powers, they can say, answer the question or we will put you in jail until you decide to cooperate. They don't usually do that, and Sonny's people told me we have subpoena power set up. And so I said, great, when when are we talking about? They said it would be about the 15th or the 17th uh, after they come back of uh, January, uh, after they finish the Christmas holidays. Once they get back, uh, we'll get, get back to you, and then we'll go from there. I said, great. Ten days after that telephone conversation, 
Sonny Bono was murdered on the top of the ski slopes. He was yeah. pistol whipped to death and dragged up against a tree. And uh, everybody was told that uh, he was an idiot and ran into a tree. Right. Uh, An end of story. Ha ha, wow. Sonny Bono. And he's out of here. And that was the end. Now, they, the bad guys involved with this stuff, okay? Now, we're getting away from my subject, but I'll get back to that right away. But the bad guys that are involved with these things, they had to eliminate Sonny over the Christmas holiday. End of story. They could not allow him to come back because they couldn't allow the investigation to ever begin with the first gaveling of the um, opening of the committee investigation. They could not do that because if Sonny had been eliminated after that, they would have to continue the inquiry. Right. So they had to stop the inquiry. The only way to do it was to stop and eliminate Sonny Bono, and they murdered him on the ski slopes. That was the end of it. No one out of his office, who I had dealt with for four years, I used to go in, when I went into Washington, I would sit down and have lunch with the guys, all right? Well, have a cup of coffee, whatever the situation was. I had dealt with them for four years going leading up to this thing. From the moment that Sonny was dead on the ski slopes, no one ever spoke to me again out of Sonny's offices. Wow. I guess not. Wow. Not surprised. End of story. They would not even answer. I mean, and I was friends. The guy that run his office, Frank Cullen, his main primary assistant, uh, and these, the, the administrative assistants are the guys that really run the offices for the Senate and the Congress. You know, they're, they're number one guys. He and I went back several years. He never spoke to me again. Right. Now I, and I found out there was two or three other close people to Sonny uh, that had the same situation where uh, uh, nobody ever spoke to him again. He just even personal friends of Sonny's. So uh, they they put the serious uh, scare on everybody that was working with Sonny. So anyhow, we get back to uh, the subject matter. So we have all these facilities underground. We were talking about the drills. The drills are so large that the, a single drill goes into the side of a mountain, comes back out, and you could drive an 18-wheeler into the hole that they just made. That's how big they are. Now, they have gotten bigger, and the ones in China make ours look like toys. The ones that the Chinese have developed, stealing our original designs, of course, you know, uh, by uh, stealing the designs that we had created our drills with, they have, what they have is uh, the biggest one that, that impressed me, and, and I, by the way, I have photographs of all this stuff, and live footage and what have you, uh, of inside these underground facilities. Uh, and by the way, I want to tell everybody right now, for the, particularly people that don't know me, and uh, there's some air, some arenas uh, I'm very very well known, and others uh, may not know who I am. Uh, my website on the computer, my website is Bob Fletcher Investigations dot com. It's Bob Fletcher Investigations one word dot uh, com. Uh, go on there, you'll see all of the reports and what I've done and my history, my background. Uh, and you will see that I have DVD reports on about eight or nine of my biggest investigations. And, of course, the, and including, by the way, a two-year investigation that I did on Sonny's death, which absolutely proves that he was murdered. But, when, again, we'll shift gears back to today. Uh, I have... After three years working, we've just finally released the uh, uh, DVD. It's a double DVD package. It's actually two discs of two hours each. It's a four-hour information uh, disc, educational disc, on what we're getting at right now. I have included in there live footage and photographs of the underground facilities, the drills, the locations, and everything I'm going to talk about tonight is completely documented 
in in a, the visual DVDs that are available. So um, uh, if you want to know what's going to happen, and I'm I'm getting around to the point of what we are actually talking about here, uh, when you want to know all of it and understand what's taking place, uh, get this DVD. It'll it'll completely set you back on your heels. So now let me get back to subject matter. We've got all these underground facilities and um, these giant drills. The, the Chinese one I was talking about, I want to finish that. The Chinese, they have a drill that is actually three drills across face the front end. If you're facing them, they're like huge circular drills. The one on the left and the one on the right are big enough for an 18-wheeler to drive into the hole that one of them would make. They have one drill that is one of those huge drills on each side, and then in the middle is one larger drill that if you were inclined to do so, you could stack an 18-wheeler on top of another 18-wheeler and drive in through that thing. So you have three across the face of the drills that they've been using in China. I do have photographs of inside the Chinese tunnels. I have the information and pictures on the ones in Russia. And we have, of course, uh, 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 the complete, actually, live footage of inside the tunnels and the underground hideouts in the United States. Some of these are created where they are primarily going to grow greens and foodstuffs underground complete set up greenhouse configurations underground to be able to continue fresh vegetables and animals and fish underground in these specialized growing facilities and again they're all interconnected by highways big enough to have drag races on them um, and, and they're mind-boggling. I do have a couple of these photos that I'm talking about are on my website. You actually can go look up the f website uh, and then look where it says uh, photographs and uh, a photo gallery, I think is what it says. And we have um, uh, several photographs, uh, wonderful pictures of down inside these facilities that have been totally filled with freeze-dried survival foods. Now, I'm still, when I was investigating this, I was still in a quandary. What in the world on earth would it be to cause these people, number one, to stop stealing as much as they were for their own pockets and start putting all this money into these rat holes underground, these survival facilities, which includes, by the way, one that recently had been completed under the uh, the the, um, uh, the Capitol building that will hold 3,000 people. And they've expanded hmm. underground facilities at the White House. In other words, not only, in other words, entire facilities for living that weren't there before that are now under the White House. Not that the president's ever going to be there, because more than likely he's going to be long gone but before the stuff hits the fan in one of the uh, bigger, better facilities. They had taken the NORAD facility, which is the one that's inside uh, the, the Granite Mountain for 40 years, that's been there, that was always there in, uh, doing all the NORAD warning facilities uh, for... Um, uh, the the possibility of an invasion, a nuclear invasion, or uh, you know, from either Russia or China, you know, and they're worried about it for so many years about that, and they had built this uh, huge underground NORAD facility. And by the way, some of these are like uh, 20 stories down, 20 stories down into the ground. We're not talking oh, about a not. one level. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, it's it's like really hard to comprehend. But the NORAD facility, a little while, was uh, taken apart. They took all the high-level electronic tracking devices and equipment and moved it into another air base a little, uh, several miles away. I think it's called the Peterson Air Base, just off the top of my head. All of this, again, is in the DVDs that I'm talking about. Everything we're talking about is covered in the DVDs. 
Uh, by the way, it's called uh, Nibiru. The incoming of Nibiru is what the title of the DVD is. Because what yeah, I, I was finally that on your website. yes, excuse me. I was seeing that on your website. Order the new incoming Nibiru DVD from the it, store. Right, and that's the one that literally is four hours. It's rather tedious, and believe it or not, we had cut it down like an hour and a half, um, and, and I hated to do it. I had to take so much out. Uh, but the bottom line is everything will be explained very thoroughly and completely in this DVD. Uh, we, we try to answer every possible question that would come up. Now, let me get back on track. Here's where, so I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm saying, well, what, what would it be that would scare the leaders of all these nations so badly that they actually would be building facilities for themselves with our money, of course, being kept completely secret for the most part, and people kept completely away. You can't go to these. And by the way, I do have a list of the locations of most of the facilities on my website uh, where, where they are in America. But what is it that would ever scare all the leaders of the world to go about creating and doing, spending this money for 20 years? And somebody came to me and, uh, at a high level and, and, and simply said, um, you, you know, it's probably Planet X. Nibiru, and and you know, and I said, I said, oh, I had heard about that. You know, everybody had heard a, a little bit about that that thing, and it's one of those things where uh, automatically, when somebody says, you know, it's, it's called Planet X because it's a uh, that's Roman numeral ten. Actually, it doesn't mean X like in mysterious. It actually means Roman numeral ten for the tenth planet, and that it's on this huge, elongated. Uh, orbit going way out past Pluto and then coming back in and that it's like a 3,000 year orbit, an elliptical orbit, and it will be coming back through. Well, again, uh, I'm like everybody else. I, uh, you know, I, I didn't even want to hear it because I thought, oh, this is one of these things that when somebody says it, you expect somebody else or in the background, you want to listen to, uh, uh, do, 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 do. you know, you wanted to hear the spooky music to, to play background when somebody starts talking about, quote, unquote, Planet X coming back. But the bottom line was this. I asked a couple of people, I said, is there any possibility to it? Is there a truth to this thing? Wait, wait, who's studying this? Where, where where can I find out about this thing? I mean, if this is, and now because then it, it did make sense if in fact there was something like a huge catastrophic intergalactic kind of a situation on its way in, that did make sense. As crazy as it sounds when you first hear it, but it only sounds crazy if you don't know anything about it. So I spent about nine months doing, contacting, getting with everybody that ever had, had, had written a paper on this thing to find out if it was real, astronomers, uh, and all the stories connected with it. And I found uh, out about a fellow named Sitchin, who back in the 60s uh, had said that um, he had deciphered 2,000 clay tablets from the nation of Sumeria uh, many years ago. In the 60s, the clay tablets were 4,000 years old, and once they deciphered them, it tells a story in great depth of this planet X, Nibiru, coming back around every 3,600 years, and that was what caused Noah's floods. And that that was what caused all these biblical descriptions of the, the stars falling from the sky and killing 100,000 soldiers back during uh, the, the time of uh, the Israelis and the, uh, uh, the, all of the biblical references to a thing called Wormwood, which is this giant planet that would return every once in a while to destroy and clean off the face of the earth. 
And so I will summarize it by saying this. After going, contacting the people, getting all of the information I could from every possible direction, astronomical, scientific, biblical scholars, etc., etc., I came to the conclusion that there is no question that Nibiru, Planet X, is on its way back in, that Ronald Reagan discovered it, was uh, given the information by his people uh, and George Bush approximately 1983. That was when everything started changing. That was when they finalized all these, uh, started finalizing and, and completing these tunnels. And that's what it is all about. All the money has gone into constructing these survival facilities and filling the facilities with foodstuffs to maintain the elite limited few that are going to have tickets to get down underground when the stuff is about ready to hit the fan. And when Nibiru comes back around... And by the way, here's the, see, here's the problem. It, there's nobody in the world yet, has since I've been talking about this, and now for about 60, 90 days since we've released the DVD, we've not had a single person that can answer the question, why are they building the underground facilities, and why have they filled them with foodstuffs so that they were ready as of last month, as of the beginning of this year, the, the foodstuffs and the facilities are like 98% done. Why are they putting the foods in today if, because a lot of people say, oh, it might be 50, 100 years. No, it's not. It's on its way back in. They would not fill it with the foods. They would not be stealing all the gold and stealing all the money and putting it into these underground facilities so that if it happened next week, that they would be able to get underground, okay, uh, and, they, and it would be filled. It is already filled. All of them are ready for use tonight as I am speaking. All these facilities are ready. And if there's anybody that can come up with a different reason, I want to know about it. Because here's what's happened. And I contacted two of the major groups, so to speak, that have been doing the uh, uh, following the Planet X thing long before I even knew it existed, i got to tell you. They've been following this thing for long, like 30 years, 20 years. They agree. They disagree on a couple of things, but they agree that it will be coming back probably in less than five years. It may be coming back as early as being first seen next December, this coming December. That, that, that's in exactly the... what I heard. Uh, an, an inside source told me that it's likely going to happen at the end of this year. Yes. Here's the uh, – and now, now, again, there are, there, there are a couple of disagreements in terms of a lot of little technicalities, and which all make sense, and they all are very intelligently logical and, and potentially proper. Uh, the – Consensus is the earliest time would be that it would be visually seen in December as a new star in the sky out there someplace, wherever, uh, and coming and getting bigger every week. And that it would pass, that's, again, now I'm talking December, January, February, March, and that it would be clo yep. coming closest to causing the problems to Earth in uh, March and April. All right, so yeah. it would be seen in December. It would be coming in, and then it would, it, what's, basically what's going to happen, it will, uh, and by the way, this planet has um, been calculated to be five times the size of Earth. So it's I pretty it was big. Three times. No, it's it physically... Well, of course, actually, nobody knows. I wouldn't argue. What I'm saying is that the the bulk of the guys that are doing uh, the astronomers that have done uh, the the physical reaction that it has caused, outlying planets, et cetera, things of that sort, they can calculate mass and blah blah blah. blah. 
Okay, but also, going by the descriptions, the description of the size of it that has been documented in every single historic scripture that goes back a couple of thousand years. It's in the Bible. It's in uh, uh, the... Um, uh, the all the Oriental um, astronomers actually wrote and tracked it coming around uh, back in the the year 10,057, and they kept track of it. They logged it in. the The monks on the the mountainside in Tibet logged it in. All of these people that have and the Sumerian clay tablets. All right, um, and then there's another fantastic piece uh, that I won't get into too much that I do explain in the DVD, but there was a a bronze plate that's called the sky disk that was located in a Germany in Germany. It is dated to the year 3,600 years ago. 3,600 years ago, they did this disk. And it's the equivalent of, it's about 12 inches across. It's made of bronze and highlighted in gold, laminated in gold. And it shows the, the solar eclipse, and it's completely dated because it shows the locations of constellations and stars, which in today's computerized astronomy, you can take those stars, feed them into the new computer programs and it will tell you the exact day to the day that this thing was created and what it is is actually a picture if you will uh, you would call it if it was done with paint it would be a painting it is a plaque a disc plaque uh, 12 inches across that has a picture of the sun the moon star constellations and their locations and the fact that it's a solar eclipse taking place but you can see both the sun and the moon so they know that it was not the moon doing the eclipse and it is nibiru but the big deal is the exact date of this thing was 3600 years ago when it was created it was discovered at an ancient site similar to Stonehenge. I only think it was I in, saw this before. That's only right. it was only it was in Germany, and they had this disc, etc. And I go into all that, and I show it, and I have pictures of it, and all the rest of that stuff, business at the museum, and da 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 da. All of that is also in the. Um, uh, it's one of the reasons that the the DV set uh, the DVD set is four hours. It's because I wanted to cover everything that's connected, and I start out with the money and come right on up to the 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 day that this is expected to be coming back. So, the people that have been studying it from an astronomical science view have decided. And uh, first off, again, we get back to size. Calculated it to be. Okay, well, I'm going to really put it this way, Judge, uh, that it's either three to five times size, but the feeling is it's probably as big as five times the size of Earth. It also has like four moons of its own. It's, a, it's like a secondary system with uh, four moons traveling with it and coming back together as a group. Now... The, de the devastating part of this thing is, is a combination of things. Uh, there will not be a collision of it hitting Earth. That's not going to happen, period. Uh, I mean, I, it might, but it, that's not the feeling. Uh, but it will cause a, an eclipse of the sun at one point in time, at least. When it comes in, it will, go, uh, it will come in and go around the sun the same as a typical comet will do. Halley's Comet comes in 75 years, every 75 years, goes around the sun, goes back out, and he doesn't come back for 75 years. There was a comet that was discovered a few years ago. was called the Hale-Bopp Comet. It ca uh, came close by, passed behind the sun in 1997, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and it will go, it came 97, went around, and went back out. Now, that one, 
and this is important, that one is on a 4,200-year orbit. And the reason I say it's important was when I first heard that the uh, Nibiru would be possibly a 3,000-year comet or a 3,000-year orbit, uh, not being uh, tremendously schooled in astronomy at that time, I thought, oh, that's kind of goofy. What, you know, you're trying to tell me this thing goes out, you know, 1,800 and and 50 years, and then comes back 1,850 years, you know, to, to constitute uh, a 3,000 year orbit. I said, wow, that sounds stupid. But when I found out that the Hale Bop is uh, on a longer one of 4,200 years, well, then I was wrong. That's not stupid uh, because it's a reality in terms of the traveling of a comet. Now, this thing is not a comet. I have to reiterate this. So its tail, and this thing will have a tremendous tail dragging behind it, of space junk, meteorites, and big pieces of rock and what have you being dragged along behind this thing. Uh, believe it or not, Halley's Comet, the tail is 24 million miles long. Now, the Nibiru, the Nibiru um, uh, tail, which again is not going to be frozen ices and pieces of dirt. Uh, it's going to be uh, meteors and meteorites, if you will. When it comes in, passes around the sun, then the Earth on its regular orbit will pass through the tail two times. So we will be bombarded with uh, asteroids and things of that sort, pretty good sized stuff, uh, two different times. The t first time when it goes around behind the sun, and then we will pass through the tail, and then we will continue going around. It will pass and most likely go back out again, and when it goes back out, we will go one more time on our regular orbit through the tail, uh, actually a second time and it will take according to the mathematics and the size and the angularity of this thing passing through the tail it will probably take about one hour for the earth to go through the which is going to be a, a meteor storm like we've nobody seen since the the time of the bible now, I, I remember uh, studying up on what Nancy Leader had to say from uh, Zeta Talk, and she claimed that the planet X is made out of mainly iron and that the tail is made out of mainly iron dust, and it's red, and when it passes us, it's going to get the whole planet, like, dusty, of course, with the meteors and everything, but it's yeah, going it, to turn and, and all the water red. And, and, I, and I pretty much agree with all of that. Uh, that. I believe that to be totally true. It's always been depicted in all of the graphics. It, you know, and by the way, you know, you had to include, uh, you know, stuff on the, the walls of cave, cave walls, for crying out loud, on this thing. Uh, but uh, the Chinese have pictured it. Uh, the, and again, the Chinese astronomers that did this back in the year 1050 or whatever it was, when, when the Chinese astronomers did their work for the emperor, if they screwed up or they did something that was considered to be an error, they cut their heads yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they just cut their heads off. So, you, you know, you're not talking about, uh, you know, this isn't a hoax that somebody made and came up with 3,000 years ago. In case we, those of us... Uh, uh, have to realize, uh, you know, these pe people weren't screwing around with putting together uh, crazy hoaxes back in uh, the year, uh, uh, you know, uh, 2000. But so uh, in terms of coloration, uh, it has been depicted for many years in, in many, many scriptures, like I say, in the, from the hillsides of the Tibetan mountains by the monks a thousand, two thousand years ago, or whatever. I've read they about that. Yeah, they depict. They're... They depict it. They've all depicted it with a red tail glowing off on two sides. I would completely agree. The likelihood of it being um, uh, iron ore blowing off of this thing as it travels, uh, you know, through space, 
that would make it look like it had two red wings coming off of it, and that's very likely. And um, uh, again, there also is, uh, of course, um, uh, talking about in the Bible, when this thing comes back around, it describes the eclipse of the sun, etc., and it talks about the waters turning red. And if we go through what literally would be a rain shower of organic, um, uh, actually iron ore dust, it, which is orange, that basically is, is probably exactly true uh, in terms of uh, the water would all be covered, uh, you know, although it could be other things on, on the water. Now, h- here's what we're looking at. People say, uh, you know, how is it going to affect, and also it's two important points. Uh, one is people want to know, uh, is there a, uh, when will we feel the effect of it, all right? If you watched the news last night, you saw one of the effects of it. The weather for the last two to four years on the globe has been the most bizarre weather in a thousand years, all right, uh, in terms of drought, rain, floods, uh, earthquakes. Uh, This is a great one that nobody's paid attention to. Uh, Going back a couple of years ago, uh, it started up. But there are like 35 to 40 volcanoes erupting today. Today in the globe. All right? Now, they're not making the news well, they actually, they do every once in a while. You actually see ABC and NBC saying, uh, oh, the big one uh, is blowing up in Iceland. They just had another one uh, back in, in Japan, and they had another one in uh, the um, uh, in India. But if you went in and did serious, just looked at the geological reports, you'll see that they have as many as 30 to 40 volcanoes presently erupting they're marked as a erupting uh volcano all right that's something brand new at yellowstone national park last month they always have a lot of small earth movement at yellowstone but last month they had uh, i don't remember what it was it was like uh 200 or more individual what they call swarms of earthquakes at Yellowstone. They also, in June and August this last year, the underground became so hot at Yellowstone, they had to block off about three or four miles of the regular roadways because they had been turned into maple syrup from the heat underground at the Yellowstone Park. Right. All right. I remember hearing about that too. You know, I'm okay. I'm actually See, from Wyoming as well. And additionally, uh, well, and and I'm not too far. I'm in Idaho. If it goes, I'm out um, of here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Anyhow, actually, on a positive note, uh, I remember yeah, reading. Well, that Nancy let me put it this way. Let me that, put it this way. I'm positive. Yellowstone's I'm not going to erupt. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a ten dollar bet on that one. But yeah. here, here's the point. It's already also affecting every planet in the last two years. Every planet on, in our solar system, starting out by Pluto and coming back in, has started to change its temperatures. They're all going up. There are surface gases and dust storms on all of the planets are varied and are changing and altering, and there are dust storms taking place that never took place in going back a thousand years. All of the planets are being affected by something already. They are some of them are jiggling and moving and being affected in their orbits, where they're they're coming around and going maybe a little farther out, and then coming back or whatever. Slight variations. All right. Man-made global warming. Yeah, right, right, for sure. And, by the way, talking about the global warming, okay, this was officially declared as the hottest year in the history of the globe this last year. All right? That's a reality. The bottom line is uh, also glaciers 
I did a serious study on the glaciers. So because I got aimed by a variety of scientists over the last two years while I've been studying this thing, when I would read papers, et cetera, et cetera, and, and I would be turned to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, go to this, look at this reference, do this reference. And um, uh, the, uh, I studied an entire, I think it was like a two-hour uh, uh, program done originally by a photographer, and then he brought in scientists because he realized what he was photographing, and that was that the ice caps and these glaciers are melting from underneath. The water is going, is literally the melting is taking place from underneath and coming out. Obviously, all the water that comes from the glaciers, and et cetera, uh, all of that eventually goes into the ocean. And in case you were not aware of, and I bet you weren't, as we speak today in Miami Beach, a couple of, uh, about seven months ago, maybe even, it may be a year now, a year ago, but they they finally had to spend millions of dollars in Miami Beach installing water pumps because the water has raised the elevation of the surf at Miami Beach has been brought up so high, all primarily to glacier ice melts, that they during the high tide in Miami Beach, every single day when they have high tide, it is flooding six, five to six blocks into the city of Miami Beach. And they have had wow. to, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> let me get a drink here quickly. Uh, hold on a moment. Okay. They literally have had to put millions of dollars of pumps to salvage the city of Miami Beach from the store, so that the storefronts wouldn't all be destroyed. Sounds and it's like it's not could become like Indonesia. It's well, and the and the, yeah, the point is, the the water has come up that high. You know, you you know, people say, oh well, I don't think, well, and how much is it going to take before that melts, and how long will God oh, had to be ten years, and at this rate and all that rate and everything. No, baloney, folks. It's done as we speak while I am talking now. The water is so high at Miami Beach that they have to put pumps in for the high tide every day today. Now, they've been in there for at least six months, uh, maybe even eight or nine months now, pumping the water. They just automatically switch on at high tide and and try to keep it out. To be honest, that's the last of the problems that people in Florida are going to have to worry about. If you're in Florida, uh, it's not the best place you want to be, or New Jersey or the West Coast. Well... Yeah, Florida. No, Florida is even worse. See, I lived there. I lived in uh, uh, half of my life in Florida. Uh, and uh, my, my son and uh, one of my boys uh, is there, works there, uh, has been there for, um, uh, matter of fact, you'll get a kick out of this. He's uh, He manages the biggest recording studio in the United States uh, in wow. Florida uh, and been there for 30 years. Um uh-huh. I used to be in the music business. I was the promotion director for uh, the southeast part of the United States for uh, MCA Records. I introduced, oh, wow. oh, I introduced, I introduced Elton John to the United States, and uh, wow. been on the road, on the road okay. with the Who, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, it's before the government decided to mess around with me. <laughs> okay, so so much for that. The 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 planet itself, when it comes close enough, uh, the it already is affecting the sun. The sun's going crazy. All everybody's, you know, all these phony lying people out of NASA and everything. They'll say, "Gee, we don't understand what's going on with this," and we don't. Gee, we don't know why that's happening. They're lying. They know where it is. They know what it is. By the way, the Vatican knows what it is and is completely involved with keeping it as quiet as they can, along with our corrupted governments, because, uh, and I'll give you this is a wonderful little story that, again, I didn't know uh, until I got into this. A couple of years ago, the Vatican built a huge infrared telescope, all right, and they run it, oversee it. It's being run, and of course, uh, scientifically overseen by 
astronomers of the highest level. Right. But it's located in Arizona. Is this and the one they own, named? It's called Lucifer or something? Yes, sir. They named it Lucifer. And it directly relates to, as the same as Lucifer does, it directly relates to Nibiru, the, the planet coming back in that's going to cause so much grief. And uh, they, uh, it, th you see, it, Nibiru does not have its own light at all. So it's a reflective body. You couldn't see it. If, you, if it was in outer space with nothing between you and it, and you looked out at night, you would not see it until it reaches a point where it's going to pick up enough light like the reflection of the sun, and then you will start seeing it twinkling as a star coming back to cause all of its grief. I uh, hear that. It will, you only be able to see it with the naked eye with two weeks before it passes, and the oh, few days yeah. well, as you, the, yeah. it's actually passing, that's when it's going to be taking up like nearly the whole sky. Well... Yeah, the the deal with it in terms uh, in terms of its size, again, uh, being five times the size of the Earth, and it's believed that it will come up and um, uh, will cause a solar eclipse again. Like I said, for a, a period of time, and because it will be between us and the Sun for a period of time, um, then you know, and people don't realize. It, it's so difficult to get a handle on this. As people say, you know, why can't we see it? And if it's this big, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Right. Um, the, 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 planets, the planets are on a, what's a fairly flat plane in the solar system. It's called the plane of the ecliptic. And uh, if you put your right arm out, straight out from your shoulder, you say, okay, that's parallel to the ground. And that is... The, the plane of the ecliptic where all the planets, give or take a few hundred million miles, so to speak, they're all pretty straight, flat on that, and going around doing their orbital thing, okay, um, and going around the sun. And then also the Earth is revolving on its axis all the time. So you get double movement of the Earth, and you have the sun, which is unbelievably gigantic, uh, you know, to try and do uh, to do a picture or a photo or something of that sort that would show it in, in some kind of a, a realistic um, comparative size. You can't do that. The distances are too far. Uh, the, the sun is too large in diameter, uh, just, just, you know, gigantic in its diameter. Now, here's what's happening. You put your arm out and you, you're representing uh, out to the right of you, uh, representing the flat plane of the ecliptic. If you go down about 12 or 8 inches, that would be approximately 30 degrees down, or 30 degree angle off of the ecliptic flat plane. It is said, uh, and this is where you have two different groups uh, in conflict. Some of the uh, astronomers are feeling that this is going to be coming up on that kind of a 30 degree uh, off of the flat plane that our planets are on. In that case, uh, you, we, you have no idea when you're first going to see this thing. See, because it's not coming in like just you could just say, oh, well, look, it would be to the right of Jupiter up there, or, you know, or Saturn. You look up there, it's just going to be to the right. You know, uh, no, it may not be at all. And and my understanding is that as we speak today, that it's completely on the opposite side of the sun, so you wouldn't see it no matter what. So right. the idea of, you know, somebody saying, well, tell me where it is and I'll find it because I'm really good with my telescope. No, that's not going to happen. And people just can't get a handle on that. Uh, and like you said, um, it, it will probably be seen in the sky like a star in December, uh, and then coming back, like I say, coming in, it will be getting bigger and bigger now, uh, and then March and April. And the reason that I'm saying that is all of the studies going back when all of these previous uh, sightings of this uh, event was always in the March and, and April period of time. Uh, so what everybody is saying, and most everybody that's been studying it agrees, 
that uh, it probably will be, again, March and April, so that if it doesn't appear this next December in the sky, which is considered to be most likely, the second most likely date would be another full year on the calendar of the next year, but it will be, again, visual in December, seriously passing close in March and April. Because those are the dates and the period of time that it always previously had passed. So, therefore, that's why we're not talking about August, we're not talking about next week, but they potentially are talking about next Christmas uh the 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 visual as a star and then uh march and april the problems so, now i so i believe yes sir so, sorry to cut you i have a bunch of questions here i mean um so oh, I go ahead and then ask ask and let me see if i can answer <laughs> yeah i i mean uh because when this does come around i would think the government what is the government going to do i mean obviously are they going to try to bring about martial law to distract us or are they going to shut down the internet and the electricity or I mean, I right, gonna, that, I, they're going to they're gonna wait okay. for martial law, and then no, no. Let, and as a matter of fact, let me give you exactly what what I am sure will happen. Okay, uh, and I'm I'm just positive of this, um, uh, and uh, I would bet money, but you wouldn't be around for me to collect. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> for, and oh, and I, and I hope I'm wrong too. You yeah. know, you have me back in a, in a year. And you can say, boy, are you the jerk of the month. I don't know. No. You're, the biggest, you're the biggest fool we've ever had on. Okay. Uh, and that's fine. I'll be glad to come back. Um, but then I'd probably just be telling you, you know, hold your breath because next year is coming. Right. All right. Anyhow, the, the bottom line is with this thing, they can never, ever announce that this, is even, that this even exists. They, they, the government cannot announce officially that this thing even exists out in Never Never Land. Although, you know, uh, a lot of people missed it, but it was only a couple of, I'm going to say 60 days ago, um, that um, uh, one of the big universities said they had absolutely identified two giant planets out past Pluto. Oh, no, we heard this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, let me get, get back to where I'm at. Here's the government. They cannot at all tell it at any time that this is coming. The moment you ever did that, there Mass would be panic. uncontrollable panic yeah. on the globe. And we're not just talking in, in you know, in um, uh, New York City or Omaha. You know, we're talking. Where are you guys located? You're in. Uh, you're, you're on the East Coast. Northeast of guys- the Poconos, yeah. Yeah, are you up there? You're up in Poconos. Okay. I used to live in Asbury Park. All right, so, okay. That's where my mom grew um, up in, Asbury Park. Uh, uh, yeah, and unfortunately, that's that's a dead city yeah. Uh, yeah. at this point in time. It just got, I mean, it just got pulverized again, so they'll yeah. never rebuild it, I don't think. Anyhow, okay, where were we? So we got um, uh, the, the government situation, all right? They, they absolutely cannot tell the world, at any time that, yep, there it is. Now, believe it or not, the Russians and the Chinese, they've had it on a regular news, but not to the extent of, uh, you know, uh, go down in a basement because it's heading back into town. You know, but they have reported it, see, uh, and, you know, on several times in Russian television, they've been right on their news, and they came out and said, oh, uh, you know, uh, they, astronomers are watching this thing, and they're not sure, and maybe this and maybe that. Uh, but that's interesting. Well, we're not getting any of that uh, or much of it. We do have a little of that, too, as a matter of fact. So, so why are they doing that? Are they doing it to cover okay, their but own no, ass? No, yeah, that well, that's just that what it is. Nobody yet has gone to our P- – what they've done so far is make fun of it, okay? Right. But, it, but the point is this. Here's what they're going to have to do, and mark my words, this is what's going to happen. Sometime four months to six months prior to the point in time when thousands of astronomers are going to say, we see a new star. What's going on? All right. They they are going, the government is going to have to declare martial law 
right. before that time. Right. All right? Yeah. And now they're going to know, because they know, and they have infrared uh, telescopes. They got satellites that they've already sent out years yeah. ago that are way out there, already taking some great pictures of it. That's you what know. most of these missions are for. Absolutely. And the missions, and, and I got... I got news, you know, for every mission you know about, there's 10 that you'll never heard about yeah, and will never it. hear about. Okay, trust me on that one. So, and most of the time when they talk about uh, having weapons, talk about, uh, we're working on a new this or working on a new that, we already have had it for 15 years and have been using it when they come out and say we're starting to look at it. Um, okay, and then that's, that's a reality. So get back to Nibiru. Uh, and Uncle Sam, he's going to, they're going to do a declaration of a national emergency qualifying for martial law in the United States. They have written in their own paperwork many years ago, whenever this situation was to arise, but I mean this situation, a situation where it was needed to have martial law, that it would have to be uh, presented to the people in a manner such that they feared for their very existence so that the government will easily, more easily than not, have martial law accepted in our backyard. The but, American people would have to think that they are going to die, okay, if the martial law is not declared. And it will be one of three manners. It will either be uh, uh, extreme terrorist event taking place in several cities in the United States simultaneously, or like a 9-11, but in four or five uh, cities. Or it will be an, an outbreak of a disease, like something like Ebola, or uh, a, a general uprising among the people, uh, such as a, a, a race riots out of control. All right. Now, all of these things is what I had figured would be applied to, national, to a national emergency um, martial law. Uh, and not, not all of them together, I didn't mean that, but one of these three, or even part of that uh, is the possibility of a serious war with Russia hmm. or Russia and China, okay? Now, I had put this into my studies about a year and a half, two years ago, and it was for the most part before we had all of that Ebola crap surface, and it was before ISIS. There was no ISIS two years ago to speak of. You know, the, the, these characters cut people's heads off, um, you know, just because uh, uh, you didn't know how to recite the Koran properly or something. Those guys, all right, those, that's the, the, the big terrorist group that for the most part didn't even exist two years ago, year and a half ago, so to speak. The Ebola, it did exist, obviously, but it wasn't, you know, People, a couple of people died in America with it. You know, they, they kind of tested the water with that one to see how people would react. Uh, and the other one is, of course, that Russia, up two years ago, hadn't started to move on the, into Ukraine. So now we have all of the possibility of a, a Russian problem, serious, a serious problem. We have the problem of uh, the diseases. They're all over the place now. We got measles breaking out. We got Ebola. We got all this gobbledygook happening again. And then, of course, uh, the the ISIS concept of uh, terrorism. Uh, you know, the, the possibility. The people of the United States, in a one day, would buy into martial law if some people calling themselves ISIS. Uh, had major terroristic events in five cities or states, the American people would accept martial law tomorrow. Yeah, Bob, but this is the problem I have with that, is because that may be all true, but if when the shit hits the fan and this thing passes, we're going to realize that our government was lying all this time. Are they going to no keep our loyalty? Right, well, that, no, now, now let me explain, explain to you why that, that doesn't even 
Don't even consider that. It doesn't even make any difference. Because here's where they are at, all right? They've been building and getting ready with our money. They've stolen all this money right out of our pockets, all right? When's the last time you think they even spent a dollar to fix one bridge in the United States of America? The entire infrastructure, bridge, water ducts, water plants, generators, wire systems, all of that, every one of them in the United States of America are on the borderline of being condemned. That's how lousy they are. We're talking God knows how many, a half a million bridges, for crying out loud. They have not spent a penny. That money went into their underground facilities. The foodstuffs was bought with our money. The tunnels were built with our money. All of that has been done secretly to prepare for locations for a limited number of people at the highest level to get out of town and get underground, period. When they close those doors to these facilities underground in the side of the mountains, there's martial law will already be in effect. The only people up there handling it are also being thrown to the wolves because the people handling a completely rioting civilization on the top of the ground with this okay, stuff well, taking place. They don't I, care. There's no more allegiance. There's no they don't care whether you like it or not. Well how because are they they're probably vote? excuse me? How are they going to rule over us after all this happens when we the soldiers aren't going to fight for them because they're going to see that they were no, lied to? Right, right. To at, 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 at some point in time, there's going to be that realization. Right. Now, by the way, and let me point this out because this is a big part of it. The amount of militarization of the police forces in the United States is totally beyond the dictatorial level already today as we speak they have been training in a military mili military direction since at least 1995 when i first saw grenade launchers gas masks tanks troop carriers 50 caliber machine guns and full automatics being delivered to the police stations around the entire nation of the world. I mean, uh, the, every every state in the nation here. Okay. All right? And that started in the 90s. They have these programs where they actually will give a police station and a sheriff's department grenade launchers and all these things that I'm talking about, 50 calibers, uh, 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 riot control tanks and uh, machine machine guns, uh, a 50 caliber machine gun, full automatics and all this kind of stuff into these police forces. They've been doing it since 1994 that I know of. As of today, I have the amount of money, and by the way, that's in the DVD too. I have pictures of the sheriffs taking delivery on this stuff. I have... Uh, the the amount of money that's been spent. Why is the Forestry Service getting millions of dollars of full automatic weapons and right. riot control gear? Why is the IRS ordering thousands of bullets and thousands of machine guns under the banner of the IRS? Why is the Social Security system have purchase orders for the same kind of stuff? These are these are are actually false uh, false billings in some cases to where they're just saying that it's going to the, the Social Security. So what's the Social Security doing with machine guns? All right? Nice. So they've been doing that intentionally, and that's to build what is a military-controlled police force throughout the United States of America to control the riots, only to protect those people until they get down underground. Once they're underground and they shut those doors on the facilities, wait till you see the, the films and the pictures that I've got and the DVDs about this thing in terms of the underground facilities. The, the doors are constructed so that if an atomic bomb went off up, up on the top level, it won't even affect their doors. Nobody's going to be able to get any place. Then when we travel through when we have Noah's floods and we have all the electrical power off, think about that one. I and mean, that's something else, too. 
uh, the, the electricity gone, period. The entire globe, all the power off, all the satellites completely down 20 days before it even gets close. Just the effect on it. The satellites will be gone, done, finished, terminated. No more banking, no nothing. If you got any money any place, and it won't make any difference. What you're going to need is a place to hide and some food and, and uh, weapons to protect your family. Right, and any That's other money you have need. backed up, you just put it in gold, bury it. Uh, maybe, maybe. Food is going to be more valuable than gold. Right, right, but if you have like a million dollars, a million dollars or something, then you just... Uh, then you buy what you need in food and seeds and weapons and shelter and all that other good stuff. And the remainder... You better buy it. You better do some good timing on it. Yeah. I yeah. would say one thing. If they move on a, a... Begin to even... If it even appears that there's things developing that might be used as an excuse for martial law, people yeah. better really start paying attention before it happens. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Now, the, see, now here's the back end of it. How bad is it going to be uh, when this thing comes around? Well, the potentials are really frightening. Uh, you know, uh, one thing, of course, is like we talk about the uh, uh, Noah's floods type, type of a situation. It's not going to be that bad. Yeah, and and that can, that will happen from two things. One is uh, the the gravitational effect. You know, we have people, again, it's a little thing that we don't think about, uh, you know, unless you're still in school, so to speak. You know, but the moon is what moves. The little moon, this little non-entity out here, so to speak, uh, that's what moves our tides in and out every day. Just the gravity of that and the sun. You kind of play in tennis with the with the water, so to speak, pulling it out, dragging it back, pulling it out, dragging right, it back. And that's only a third of the size of the planet. And, and it's and, it's you know. it's nothing, like you know, in reality. All right, mm-hmm. this thing coming by, and by the way, come coming pretty fast too. And made uh, of iron, strong magnetic. Made field. of made of potentially made of iron, the gravitational effect would just yank the waters right out of the seabeds, and you oh, got to wow. remember the Earth's. You know how fast do you think the Earth revolves on its axis? Very fast, about 800 miles per hour, and centrifugal yeah, it's about, force. Yeah, it's about a, it's actually about a thousand miles an hour. Right, and, and people, the centrifugal force will cause all that water to go on all the coastlines. Well, well yeah, the 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 problem is uh, uh, so that's one problem. Then the next problem we talked about with the Earth potentially passing through the tail of this thing, uh, the that would be. The tail basically coming behind it, I don't know how long it would be, but that could be really long. But as long as it's going fast, really quick, uh, that, that's, that's good for us, so to speak, on one hand. But the tail would be the width, approximately, of the planet itself, all right, in terms of the width of the tail. Uh, and then it would diminish off from there. So depending on how quick or how soon the earth would pass that one hour to go through that tail uh depending on whether it's real close after the passing going behind the sun or if it's uh, uh you know x numbers of time hours after it's passed that will have to do with how thick or how profuse the junk is going to be because it will diminish the farther away it is from the body of the um, Nibiru, um, but you you potentially have that 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 uh, storm uh, of um, uh, asteroids, uh, meteor storms, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the storm we would go through once and then go through the second time. Uh, that's it's it's going to be terrible. You know, we witnessed uh, a couple of years ago. That tsunami that hit Japan and hit yeah, um, yeah uh, that's what the, I was going to ask. What what about the effects on like the nuclear oh, power plants and stuff like that? Oh, that and that that's another point. And by the way, I also covered that in the DVD. I really got the waterfront covered with this uh, with this report. Uh, but the um, uh, the in terms of uh, the uh, tsunami, 
All right, that tsunami that we witnessed, which was mind-boggling to us in modern yep. times, because we are able to watch it in real time, being transmitted up uh, right and back to, to our television. Right. And we watched that tsunami where the water just came and just kept coming, and it was like uh, some kind of, it was like a, a bulldozer, uh, a liquid bulldozer a thousand miles long and it just came right in and kept going and just wiped out entire giant buildings and and communities and everything and it just kept going like like it wasn't even there turned everything into floating debris floated a half a million vehicles for crying out loud i mean it was mind-boggling now that came from the middle of the ocean pretty much that far away, way out in the ocean. And it was a little, tiny earthquake hiccup. That's all it was. It was a, 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 compared to a, a big one, okay? Um, you know, a giant one. It was just a, you know, a kaboom and a collapse of a couple of miles uh, underneath the, uh, in the seabed, causing a big wave to start. And that, that's the tsunami. And it goes out 360 degrees from wherever that, took place travels at 500 miles an hour is like an average 500 mile an hour wave and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it gets close to the shoreline and of course just builds on itself all right now that was a single hiccup a small not a small but well but it wasn't a gigantic earthquake all right i don't remember what it was but it may have been a five or seven or something like that all right, uh, which in downtown Los Angeles would be bad, but not uh, not in the middle of the ocean. But that tsunami did what it did. Now, the possibility of multitudes of meteorites or asteroid junk, space junk, the size of a school bus hitting into our, all of the oceans, not counting the fact that you might get a couple of them in New York City or Los Angeles, or wherever, any place on the globe, and that's and that even the worst of it relates to where the uh, what the the frontal part, the worst part is probably going to be the front of the planet Earth when it goes through this tail of all this junk. Um, now, again, thinking in terms of it spinning at a thousand miles an hour, uh, and it will take about one hour for it to pass through it, the front will be changing, revolving, such that for that entire hour will be a th at least a thousand mile front at any time going through all the space junk, if that made any sense to you. Uh, you know, it'd be, uh, oh, again, yeah. revolving. Yeah, right. And the atmosphere so, uh, at that point in time will be much so, more thin. Yeah, so you, be you know, if you, drew, if, you, if you could take a marker and draw a line from the North Pole to the South Pole, and held on to the earth so it didn't move and pushed it through this mess for an hour. Now you do the same thing and draw that line marker and have it spinning a thousand miles an hour. In the one hour it will take from beginning to exiting the junk path, the tail of this thing, you will have uh, uh, had a thousand miles exposed one time and then a thousand miles exposed as the frontal part of this thing the second time and then of course everything behind it you know I, you know it's hard to analyze what that would be uh, the mathematics on that is over my head but um so what else do we have so we got junk coming in we have the gravitational effect on the water we have uh, the uh, what took place uh, according to the people that have uh, done their serious studies on this thing in history found out that the earth during biblical times, the last time it came through, that, uh, that it came around, was jogged off of its axis 26 degrees when it came around. Now, that can be gravitational, it can be magnetic, it could be, I don't know exactly what that would have been. But they verified that because in that sky disk that I mentioned earlier, where they uh, had this found this drawing 
right. in uh, uh, with gold, gold and uh, bronze. This huge disc showing the picture of the sky. It included now. Remembering this was from Germany. It included uh, the Orion Belt, or excuse me, not Orion. The um, oh, son of a gun. One of the constellations. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, one, of the const- the poles one of the place, constellations that normally would not be seen in Germany right. in the sky at that time. That's right. All right? But it was on the bottom side of this plate, on this drawing, if you will. Uh, so on the basis of that, they did the calculations, and that should have been visible in Egypt, but it was visible in the German sky that day when it happened. So it means everything was moved 26 degrees, all right? And that's fairly, that mathematics can be done fairly easy. Now, they went out and they said, okay, if this really happened the way we think, and da-da-da-da-da, on this date, they went back through historic records all around the globe to see what had taken place during those dates in old historic uh, scripture writings, etc. You know, like the the monks in, in Tibet, etc. The Chinese emperors, uh, astronomers, etc. And sure enough, the entire globe was affected in radical weather, storms, winds. Uh, 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 you know, and, and all of the uh, earthquakes, volcanoes. All those things were affected. Uh, during that period of time, and they verified it around the entire globe. So again, it was one of the things that said, you know, again, you know, this is this isn't a hoax, folks. Uh, this is this is what happened. So, do you have any questions? Oh yeah, a ton of questions. <laughs> but anyway, come up with one of them. Right? Yes, yeah, sir. I'm going to get a drink I... of water. Okay. Um... I'm, 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 I'm drinking my water. Come up with a question. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um. Absolutely. I, I've been writing them down as we've been going along. So I mean, um, some people claim, and, and I don't want to take this too far out there because I know a lot of pe- a lot of people who this is new to. We've already pushed them the limits as it no is. No question. Right. But uh. But the Anunnaki supposedly the link to them. Um. Exactly. Um. Okay. That's. That's a part of the first question. I guess, uh, do these Anunnaki live on that planet? Uh, do they come and visit here as the planet's um, passing by? Are they going? Are some of them, or a good majority of them, going to leave as this 10th uh, planet passes by, maybe 20 or 30 years from now, you know, when it's way far out there? Um, and also, are we telepathically linked to this thing? So if humanity evolves spiritually... Will we collectively influence the d- amount of destruction that hits us? So, can we limit destruction in that sense? I mean, the, we. I, I, okay. I, yeah. I, okay. Well, let me let, I, let me uh, uh, approach a couple of these uh, uh, thoughts at this at this time. Okay. Uh, and uh, the for the people that don't know what you're talking about, uh, the the Anunnaki is reportedly. Uh, were the persons that were here before us and actually uh, potentially the story being that they had uh, uh, created, uh, that they came to, came from another planet, um, all right, back whatever period of time it would have been, and that they would have been some of the first visitors from outer space and that literally created... Uh, many of the um, uh, basically created human beings to to work under their command to to do mining you know, on the globe on on the the globe of Earth so that they could take gold back to their planet uh, and the implication is in the, the the stories again this was part of the clay tablets that I referred to that uh, were the Sumerian clay tablets describing the the uh, uh, incoming of Nibiru. Uh, now, according to the deciphering of those uh, clay tablets, which, by the way, I equate it sort of like 
a diary of some people mm -hmm. literally living and writing these things down uh, 4,000 years ago uh, in the nation of Sumeria, which is now uh, Iraq, Iran area uh, on the globe uh, today. Um, the, uh, and, and part of that story was, however, uh, this is the important part. Uh, if you, first of all, some people, of course, still don't even believe in, in aliens and flying saucers and things of that sort. That's a mistake uh, if you don't believe uh, that that exists. Uh, I'm afraid that's, uh, that's, that's really a mistake. And it doesn't affect religion at all. The bottom line is, is some of uh, uh, the uh, very staunch Christian would, st would say that um, God created the earth and the people on the earth, and that was the end of it. But see, that would shortchange my God, because why would he just take out of all of the unbelievable creation of the, the universe, of the whole thing, why would he just select one lousy little planet that's uh, over here as his only uh, location to put living beings? That doesn't make sense, even religiously, actually, if you apply common sense to your religion also. Oh, uh, UFOs I mean, and can, aliens no doubt exist. I mean, but what exactly are they? I mean, because... Oh, yeah, I, right. And, yeah, and, and I mean, of course... They, they could be and, demonic and, beings for all we know. Uh, well, and, and, <laughs> and I would think, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, using good and evil as, uh, you know, black and white, left and right... Uh, you know, being uh, good over here and evil here, and, and we all pretty much know the difference between it. Uh, you can't say that you don't. Uh, the, the, um, uh, I think the problem, and it remains to be seen, um, uh, myself, uh, I absolutely believe in, uh, uh, in alien life. I absolutely believe aliens exist on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. I believe that aliens are working hand in hand with people at high levels of governments on the globe. I believe aliens uh, affected Adolf Hitler. Uh, and uh, th that's a little spooky because that would indicate from our point of view that they were giving a helping hand to the evil side. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, we have to realize something uh, which is really scary stuff. First off, if you accept the fact that aliens are out there and have been zipping in and out of the uh, of the globe uh, of our uh, our Earth uh, for tens of thousands of years, or maybe even a hundred thousand years, I don't know. Um, which I do believe absolutely. Um, uh, we we have a real problem, and that is that we are no more advanced than a, a well-grown frog compared to them. And the idea of uh, uh, are they going to come to help us, uh, that's a, been a question. You know, it, it, assuming alien life exists, which I do believe, uh, to not believe that is foolishness. Some of the well, admissions that we've gotten from... Um, I believe uh, it the, lightly, Mr. Fletcher, but I mean... Um, to, the only thing is, if they were some sort of uh, beings, the fifth dimensional beings, for instance, demonic, whatever, uh, fallen angels, they could make themselves appear however they want. So all these meetings with government officials, they could just say they are from some other planet. Oh, with well, Hitler, well, it, well, whatever. Yeah. But uh, see, I've done it strictly and totally on the basis of, okay. uh, uh, of the uh, development of products and things of that in the last 50 years. There's no way that we went from horse and buggy to landing on the moon in 75 years. Right. You know, I mean, you know, without without assistance. Right. You know, I'm sorry. You know, and uh, uh, do you do you have any idea? When we we get get into this a little bit, if you want to, um, do you have any idea how many crop circles there are it have that have had taken place in the last few years? Oh yeah, I've seen a couple myself. I mean, I mean, I've I've seen dozens, probably at least thirty or forty UFOs in my life. Okay, so. good. Now here's and 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 that's that's great because uh, you're 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 a step up on an awful lot of people uh, by 
very, the fact that you had seen that many. Yeah. But the point I was going to make is, it's like 25,000 crop circles over the last 20 years or so. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the number gets mind-boggling, and the intricacy, and what they are, uh, some of them are blueprints, some of them are astronomical uh, diagrams of uh, space and outer space and planetary constructions. Uh, some of it uh, is uh, medical. Uh, some of it's uh, other types of uh, high-level scientific information. Now, why it's being delivered in that configuration, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I will say that there, there are high-level people in the United States that know when they're going to be and when they're going to come, hmm. uh, where they're going to show up, take the information down, and then whatever goes from there. Okay. Why that's happening, I'm not sure. But those are created by entities off of this earth. Yeah. There's no question about that. Right. Right. Uh, I have very good video. I say very good. It's not very good. It's good enough to be to be understood. It's not a, mm -hmm. uh, not a, a Hollywood uh, production video. But I have... Uh, a couple of good videos of um, uh, the, the 18 to 20 inch uh, bronze colored balls coming down and just going over the field and swinging yeah. around in a circle and creating an entire crop circle in four seconds. Yeah. We have that yeah. on film. See? We have that on film. Now, you, you, if you go to somebody and say, oh, I don't believe in anything, you know, say, well, please explain this to me and to the Air Force. Well, I'm 100% with you there. I mean, it, 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 you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Now, in terms of a lot of people ask, <clears throat> why doesn't, uh, or do I think that there will be, uh, let's call them space entities, mm -hmm. that would come in and assist or help us or, or salvage us in the last minute before this takes place? I hope so. Um, apparently, they did not back during the time of the Sumerians because the way the writings go in these clay tablets the the beings that they called Anunnaki all right those guys got back in their spaceships and left when they knew it was headed in and they took off and they left those mining uh, very low level IQ uh, grunts that, uh, that that we're back here doing digging the holes and pulling out the gold and doing that stuff on their behalf, working like slaves, so to speak, or slave entities. Uh, they were stuck. They were just there, and uh, the uh, the Anunnaki got in their spacecraft and got out of there uh, before the hit the hit the fan. So, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, it would appear if they couldn't do it then. If they had the ability to come from a, a either a planet that may be one of them, it could be that one of the five moons going around with this uh, with um, uh, uh, with the planet X, it could be that there's life on one of those moons. I don't know, and I have you know I don't have any. I'm just that's my own supposition. So don't go any place with that. But um, uh, that, you know, that's a possibility. I don't think. If you, you know, and people say, well, why wouldn't they save us? You know, why wouldn't they salvage Earth and do what they could to protect it, et cetera? It could be that the blowing up or destruction of something like Nibiru would affect five other planets that are more important than Earth someplace. Right. No, you I, see, then I like the a theory step. where they say that the aliens are leaving us alone because we are our own species and we are responsible for ourselves. And if we destroy ourselves, then that's just the way it's supposed to be. Right? Okay, but that's, that doesn't bring into account uh, Nibiru. Um, you follow right. me? Uh, you know, in, from, on, on that part of it. Uh, you know, the idea that we make our own bed and we got to sleep in it, uh, you know, that... that certainly is true and we've not broken any great records in terms of humanity uh for the last thousand years that's for sure we are we are the most messed up thing that you could ever imagine uh oh, yeah. well you you know you watch you watch television you watch the news 
what in the world? And the, the right. programs that are popular, the junk <laughs> that's popular on television embarrasses me. And, and, uh, and, uh, and like I said, right. I told you, I, I was in the rock and roll business. It takes a lot to embarrass me. <laughs> uh, you know, you get, go on the road with the who, like I did, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, takes a lot to, to rattle my cage, but, uh, the the earth and speaking just for America, um, you know, shame on us. The right. condition we're in right now, shame on us all as far as that's concerned. You know, and I, I don't want to get into a you know, don't want to become a preacher here, but uh no, no, that, no. that's the best way to put it, I'll tell you. So, shame so on us. I have a creepy Just, question for you. Go this ahead. One, I'm ready this for one creepy. Might, this one might creep you out of it. So um <laughs> like you mentioned earlier how the Anunnaki created humans to mine gold. I agree with that. And uh, so, well, see, what now, is... I, let me let, let me say this now, so people don't uh, get the wrong idea. That is the study of a Dr. Sitchin, who right. was a fellow that uh, did the uh, analysis of the clay tablets from Sumeria, right. and that yep. was his so, story. Okay, so go from there. So uh, yeah. So what if? While, when they're about when they're about to pass, and since uh, Nibiru is supposedly their home planet or home star or whatever, or one of the planets uh, orbiting uh, Nibiru, so what if when they pass, what if they, what if like that whole rapture story is true, and what if it's not you know God taking us up, but what if it's these aliens, and what are they going to do? Are they going to eat us? Are they just going to start eating a lot of the population, like cattle? Well, see, the big problem is we don't know. And uh, it, it's my belief, uh, again, it's just, just from studying just a multitude of things that uh, many years ago I wouldn't, I could have cared less. Uh, but, but unfortunately, I've been put in a position where I've had to study things that I may not have had an interest in. But we don't know. Let's take the, uh, the average, uh, these grays that are... Um, uh, you know, been reported as uh, as a primary worker that's here all the time. You know, flying in on the different things and uh, doing the experiments on people that have been picked they up. They scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Okay, they it it would boy if you weren't scared if you if you were picked up by one and uh, a group no. of them and put it's, up uh, and had they, experiments they, done on you. They <laughs> are the red UFOs, and if I see a red UFO, I I do a prayer real fast and just like you know I command it to leave basically. And well, all those, they are very much telepathically linked, so they will usually listen. I, I, uh, now, uh, so we, we get to, uh, talking about, about the, the greys. I think the greys are a working class, yeah. a programmed entity to carry out tasks. I think they are predominantly, uh, the uh, uh, the characters that are manning the the UFOs, the saucers, and things of that sort. Some of them are unmanned, you know, just uh, non uh, remote controlled objects. Some of them are uh, controlled, like I say, a saucer, like the ones that crashed in Roswell, um, uh, and it was two or three of them that crashed there. Um, according to FBI papers that I have from Herbert Ho from uh, from uh, Hoover, FBI Director uh, Hoover at that time. Anyhow, uh, I think they are just a, a working class sort of a, a robot, if you will, and they yeah. carry out what they're supposed to, and that there is other thinking entities above them that would control them, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, according to the um, uh, according to uh, oh, it's, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, my my wife is just telling me what time it is. Uh, yeah. According to yeah. uh, 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 according to um, uh, I, I lost totally lost my my direction here. Um, I believe those little entities uh, right. uh they they are what they are and i think a, a remote control situation according to many people that have come forward with a thing called the uh, is it the uh, discovery project i think that's what it is the taller uh, ones are clones. the disclosure project that's what yep. it is disclosure project these guys a couple of them are, i know personally 
um, their their summation is that there's uh, as many as 300 individual different space entities that have been coming in and out for so long in around mm-hmm. Earth, uh, and there's that many of them. 300 uh, different types of alien I, species. Yep. Yes, I think that was the number that they had come up yep. with. Um, and uh, the the cra- you know, when you really get into it, and as a couple of our uh, astronauts, a couple of the guys, what's his name, went on the moon, Edgar uh, um, Mitchell. Uh, no, Ed, no, Edgar Mitchell okay. went on the, okay. to the moon a couple of times, twice, okay. I think. Um, you know, he, he I had the recording of it, you know, he, as soon as they landed, he said, oh, they're, they're, are, they're here, they're ahead of us, and their craft is parked up on the edge of the crater over there, and mm. it's gigantic, and uh, I can't believe it, but they're here. Uh, and just like we talked about, they're, they're, they're already up here waiting for us. Uh, you know, uh, and, and you go to uh, the, the fellow that uh, was in charge of um, Skunk Works operations that created all our spacecraft designs and all of that. Just before he died, he said, we have been flying, we have had the capability to go to the outer planets and fly around the planets for years and years. And uh, he says, it's, ne- it's never going to be made public, but we've been doing it for years and years. And mm-hmm. when, when these guys at that level, uh, he had no reason to lie. He was dying, right. you know, uh, I mean, literally on a, a deathbed kind of a thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, he said, uh, we've been doing that for, and it's, and, and they're talking about, uh, uh, warping space and time. It's the only way you can go between the planets, et cetera. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, that, that is, um, uh, has, has, has been an old theory for long. And, and the truth is, and by the way, you get into that a little bit on the, in the DVDs, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the bending space and time is the only way you can yeah. literally end up going forward in time, back in time. Time and space is, an, is a, a, a graphic entity that can be varied and altered. And once you can figure out how to bend it, you can instantaneously go from a craft 50 miles over top of New York City to 50 miles over top yeah. of the moon anywhere and do right. it within a blink of an eye uh and uh these entities that do exist out there uh you know they have that ability but they also have the ability to help us or not and i don't think the way the people at the highest levels of our corrupted government have been scurrying around building their rat holes to mm-hmm. hide in I don't think they've had any indication that any space entity is going to come down and help us out when the Biru comes back again. I think they will. And, okay, and think, that's good. Well, that's I think they're going to be crushed thought. underneath their uh, underground cities. Uh, excuse me? I think well, see, crushed. and I don't know. And, and We're I don't know. It's, it's a global it's, earthquake here. When this thing passes and the tectonic plates realign and they, and they move back up, this is going to be... be uh, Worldwide, earthquake. Right. On, uh, uh, every place will be at least a 9.0 on the Richter scale. Some places 15.0. Yeah, yeah. I believe it will be. Uh, we, we're, again, we're looking. If it does not get uh, pulled away, you know, in a manner such that it doesn't uh, do this major damage, we're going to have tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes, meteor storms, and all of the above uh, in a very short period of time on the globe. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't know how well off these people are going to be underground with their facilities. Uh, and again, and I'm going to, I'm going then I'm going to get out of here. Uh, but the uh, you mentioned it earlier, and you want to have another little thing to just add to the soup here, so to speak. We have 130 nuclear, nuclear power, power plants, plants in yep. the United yeah. States. Yeah. And when they Go through their melt thing. Uh, you know, it only takes one, but uh, if half of them, they need their help. <laughs> if half of them go through this meltdown situation because there's no way to control them, 
Um, so you're talking a uh, hundred years before the 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 air, general area, any one of those is even livable again. Yeah, and if all of them go off, you can forget about it. So we're definitely going to need their help. So the whole thing, yeah, the, 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 I'll tell you one thing. There will be a lot of people praying that never never believed in God. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that's yep. for sure. Absolutely. Well, that, that's another thing. Like Revelations, it mentions, you know, Jesus will come in the sky as, as a, you know, a thief in the night and all that stuff. But I believe a lot of that stuff is just symbolism for Nebru. And when people see Nebru and, the, and they see all this destruction, they're going to realize that a lot of what they learned in the Bible was symbolism and that the government was lying to. I don't think we're gonna, anybody's going to trust the government, especially the people who work under them in the military, you know, the, stu- the military people that they have trying to protect them as bodyguards. They're going to turn on them, I think. Uh, they're, they're not going to know when the, when the martial law is declared... Uh, basically, I just go in. That's you know, total militarily uh, controlled every street right. corner, so to speak. Right. Um, but they're Will not going to know. They're going to they're they're going to be convinced it's because of terrorism or or Ebola right. disease True. or this yeah. thing or that thing. They're not going to be yeah. told what it is. Yeah, By the yeah. time that's uh, again, I'm going to say four to six months ahead of the first sightings. See, then when the sightings take place. Um, the bad guys, they're already going to be down in their hideouts, and they don't yeah. care what goes on. You know, they're just going to pew, lock the doors and start eating yeah. dry foods. True. And, and, and they're going to be praying that the, some of them come through it, and uh, I, have no lo- I have no idea how long they think they may have to be underground, hmm. but they will have to be for a pretty long time. A long time, Because yeah. uh, according to uh, archaeologists digging up the old dirt, that gives that um, that story, the uh, scientific story of what took place, you know, by digging into the dirt uh, and doing the layer thing. Uh, the last time the Bureau passed close, it was a hundred years of no vegetation in the dirt. Hmm. Wow. Mm. Okay. Okay, right. sports fans. Hey, right, this is too bad we didn't have anything to talk about. Yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, we could keep going we could for hours. I know this. Yes. We could just ping pong back and forth. Have a great time. Uh, and if if anybody that's interested, uh, uh, you know, uh, you have to get you have to get this DVD. Yeah, and it has please. all no, the answers fine. and pictures, everything that um, that you wish you could get. Yeah. You know, if you had something to show your friend, where can we find this all, DVD at? Go only one place, and that's go on my website, uh, bobfletcherinvestigations.com. dot com. Awesome. That's Bob Fletcher Investigations dot com. It's awesome. on there. Go to um, well, it, its first page will show you how to uh, how to get your copy of the thing. Uh, it's 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 really it's really great. The feedback has been mind boggling, and uh, I will say in December, I had one hundred and eighty thousand hits on wow. my website. Okay. Wow. Uh, and uh, in terms of the people that have had uh, have gotten the disc for themselves, uh, the feedback for the most part has just been uh, uh, wonderfully uh, uh, good. So well, um, well, you got to get it. It's unfortunately it may be terrible news, but I yeah. don't know. I think it's better to know what's happening rather than Absolutely. just be shaken yep. out of the bed one day and uh, uh, yep. realize yeah. you have to. You have to learn how to swim and you're 50 miles away from the ocean. Congressman pulling off some kind of a, a, a scam one way or another to, uh, to get a couple million bucks for his summer house in Tahiti or something like that. Uh, we were looking at, uh, uh, to, to my shock, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, who was in charge of the Defense Department at this particular point in time on the day before the 9-11 event took place. He came, uh, he was sitting answering questions before a congressional committee with whom I had done work, and uh, he said that over the last few years, it's been realized that $2.3 trillion had vanished from the Defense Department budget. It's just unaccounted for. You know, and we're talking with a T, trillion dollars. 
And mm-hmm. that's mind-boggling, uh, you know, because oh, yeah. you can't, uh, but you can't, you can't even money launder a trillion dollars. How would you ever even do that? Uh, you know, if it was a, just a regular theft of, like I say, of a few million, that's one thing. But uh, for two point three trillion to vanish out of their budgeting at the Defense Department is like a, a mind-boggling. And they're also talking about the timing here. Now, this was the day before the nine eleven uh, right. event. With okay, so I was just going to ask, this, right? Yeah, right, and so obviously. We we never heard that story again. I mean, uh, you know, we have it on videotape of him doing this, uh, uh, you know, admitting that they uh, that they lost uh, a couple of trillion dollars. But of course, the next day was nine eleven. End of story. We never heard it again. And we were occupied, of course, with um, uh, all of the aftermath of uh, the um, the the, uh, the we'll call it a terrorist event. Uh, I actually. I won't get into that tonight, but I'm I'm sure it was not a, an outside terrorist event, but that it was probably a uh, uh, what we call a false flag operation right. carried out by some of our own corrupted persons in government here. But uh, what, as a matter of fact, coincidentally, again, and I say that word uh, completely in a joking manner, uh, the missile that what they called they told us it was an airplane. But the missile that went into the side of the Pentagon uh, was right into the building area where all of all of the paperwork for this vanished two point three trillion dollars would have been held. That I guess was rather also kind of coincidental. So that was all gone anyhow. I guess if anybody was going to try to uh, look into it, they would have a hard time doing that. Right. You know, just use a so, missile to destroy the evidence, sure. Yeah, so I'm sitting here and I'm looking and I see, uh, you know, like, you know, what what's going on with the, with that kind of money disappearing? In, uh, then uh, uh, the lady who was theoretically in charge of oversight with the Federal Reserve, she had uh, sat before the Congress a short time later and uh, said that, uh, somebody brought it up. One of the congressmen asked her what was the story uh, behind the fact that there's been nine trillion dollars, again nine trillion with a T, that seemingly is off the books and misplaced relative to some loans and money that was put into from our Federal Reserve here in the United States, lent out to the European banks. It's $9 trillion that had vanished. And then following that up, or running almost side by side, we had uh, uh, Representative Ron Paul had stepped forward, and he had said, uh, uh, went to the um, Federal Reserve and said, there's too much information indicating that all the gold is gone from Fort Knox. Yep. You know, and uh, he said, uh, we... We want to request, on the behalf of the Senate, the Congress, and the American people, a complete audit on the gold. Well, the Federal Reserve System, which was set up so many years ago, was specifically set up in a manner such that the Senate and the Congress and the United States citizens have no right whatsoever to ever request an audit. It was specifically set up that way. Uh, so. Yep. The, the, the Federal Reserve, which has nothing to do with the United States government, that comes to a big surprise for a lot of people, but the Federal Reserve is a group of private banks that oversees and runs and controls all of the funding of the United States government, as well as oversees the Fort Knox gold inventory. All right, And they are private banks. It is not a division of the United States government officially, period, end of story. And so when they set it up to be the people that did control, the bankers that did control all of our money and financing, et cetera, uh, they set it up specifically. So they told Ron Paul and senators and congressmen to just get out of their face and go away because they weren't even going to talk to them. They had no right to even ask questions. Mm-hmm. Now, so... I'm sitting here uh, with uh, starting uh, again. Uh, I hit about these 
interconnecting oh, yeah. many of the facilities from one state to another, traveling at the, the trains are traveling at uh, uh, 400 to 500 miles an hour. They're magnetic, levitated, nothing touched the tracks. They're like the good ones that they have in Japan that they have already installed above ground, traveling at 400 miles an hour. Uh, but the ones down under uh, in the uh, underground facilities are even faster. There's, there a there's absolutely no way for them to wreck, so to speak. There's nothing on the tracks, nothing crosses the tracks. And uh, when, they, when you get in it to go to another location, they just seal the doors like, like a, a subway in New York City, close the doors, you sit down, belt yourself in, and it just goes swoosh. And uh, again, it's up to 500 miles an hour in a few seconds, and then they slow down and you get out at your next location. Uh, these... The, the construction of these underground facilities has been done with gigantic drills that are mind-boggling. And by the way, the Chinese have bigger ones than we do. And the ones that we have, the smallest ones, can go in through the side of a mountain. They travel six or seven miles an hour, digging literally like drilling oh, a huge hole. Yes, sir. Uh, you're, you're cutting off there, buddy. Oh, I am? Okay. Yeah, just for okay. It seems to be better. I heard it, it, am I okay, okay now? Maybe it was me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh, your head yeah, is I've cutting off. Yeah, I've seen those uh, drills you're talking about, and it had an Air Force logo on it. I I don't know. I think they were in Nevada, but yeah, they were drilling underground with this just big drill. Well, this this well, all they, completely reminds me of that Ozarks from that uh, Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory episode. That's crazy. Yeah, yes, Jesse's that. By the way, the, and Jesse went into. One location there, very you know, a little, for a little bit uh, underground. Uh, it is in the Ozarks, the one you're talking about. Um, uh, that it, it's slick. What they did was they that's been there. That one has actually been there for for a few years, and it's been uh, uh, labeled as a an underground general storage area. But when they're ready to um, uh, to utilize it uh, the way they're planning to utilize it, along with uh, the the rest of them, uh, it will be, you know, full time uh, as a survival living facility for the limited few. Um, I have I have finished doing. It took me three years of my investigation on this alone. Now I have to say something out in front because I had dealt with Senate and congressional. Uh, leaders for so many years, and I literally was a federal uh, witness. I have testified personally before the United States Senate Intelligence Committee in Washington, D.C. Uh, one of my huge reports that I did, uh, I believe, is what got Sonny Bono murdered on the ski slopes because we were okay. 15 days away from opening up a congressional investigation into drugs, drug smuggling, and weapons supplies out of Washington, D.C., connected to the uh, intelligence community. Right, it would be the we CIA, had, like they say. They, they Absolutely. They had contacted us. I'd worked with Sonny, supplied him with uh, an amazing array of information uh, for about a year, he had called me, uh, his offices contacted me about December the 15th or something like that, and they said, we are all set to go. Sonny and the rest of the Congress is going on their Christmas holiday. The first thing we're doing back here in Washington, and by the way, I was living in Los Angeles at that time. They said the first thing we're doing after the Christmas holidays when Sonny gets back, we have the investigation ready to start. We wanted to make sure that you were prepared to come into Washington and, and move forward with us on it. I told them I was excited to do it. I was ready to do it. Let's go, because we had fooled around with this thing for over a year in terms of just setting it up. Uh, and the investigation was not only going to be a congressional inquiry, but it was going to be with subpoena powers. And normally they never do that, and they don't permit it, because what happens 
then you have some senators and congressmen that are carrying out these different inquiries with the ability to force government persons to answer the question, do you know anything about drugs coming into our Air Force bases? Do you know anything about this picture that Mr. Fletcher supplied us, which is a motion picture of uh, the delivery of narcotics on a United States aircraft and being offloaded at air bases at the Homestead Air Force Base? Are you familiar? And with subpoena powers, they can say, answer the question or we will put you in jail until you decide to cooperate. They don't usually do that. And Sonny's people told me we have subpoena power set up. And so I said, great, when do and Ken put out a mandate of their own that they were going to create 5,000 underground facilities, not big ones like we have in America, but 5,000 of them, and a couple of them were going to be big, and some of them were, a couple of the larger ones had already been underway for a while, and they were going to have these accomplished by the end of 2013, coming into 2000, the first of 2014. And I checked into it, and I found out that they had, in fact, completed it, that they did have 5,000 of these facilities as a shelter survival locations for many thousands of people. So now what we had is uh, the Russians doing it, the same thing being done in Europe in several different countries. The Red Chinese had gone and started converting what was a couple of thousand underground tunnel facilities that literally had been in China going back a thousand years. They're back in the old days of antiquity. They used to fight wars by running in and out of these underground uh, tunnels uh, back when they were st still doing bows and arrows and throwing rocks at each other. But they had a lot of them started already, thousand of them. Uh, so the Red Chinese had gone in and updated those and completed them the same as we had in the United States here. Uh, for our 100 and 103 or whatever we have here. So uh, then so I really... They, uh, yes. Do they uh, need a seed bank for this? Because I recently read that uh, Russia was building a seed bank for all life on Earth. Well, uh, actually, the re now I'm not dead positive on Russia, but uh, there is one that was built back in 2006... It's a huge international seed bank, which actually oh, you have wow. to, you have to, and by the way, this is cooperatively done by um, uh, the United States and several other nations cooperatively, uh, and a lot of, um, uh, excuse me, I was going to say a lot of the um, uh, funding came from uh, not only, of course, just they steal it whenever they want money, they just steal it out of the covert black operations. Anyhow, the, nobody's allowed to look at it, so it's pretty easy money. But the, a good amount of that money was supplied by, um, uh, what's his name, the computer, uh, uh, the uh, the fellow and his wife that's so wealthy from the computer's um, Bill success. Gates. Bill Gates, I'm sorry, slipped his name. Bill Gates put in a lot, uh, donated millions and millions of dollars just into that one seed bank, and I believe it's located in Denmark, actually. Now, there are two or three other locations uh, of uh, seed banks. Um, basically, what these are uh, are what you would call um, storage facilities to maintain um, the seeds necessary to replant the entire face of the earth when it's totally wiped out. That's basically the essence of it, to, to have the seeds necessary after some type of a total wipeout of the globe uh, and to um, uh, actually uh, have the seeds to replant everything necessary like Noah's Ark 
to regenerate the growing of all the products and plants and trees and everything when they've been wiped out from a global disaster. Now, there's, um, again, as I say, this, this one uh, that I think is in uh, Denmark, near Denmark, there's um, uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Iceland are, are all uh, uh, donating in terms of maintaining it. Uh, that's a large, uh, pretty pretty big facility. Uh, the um, the one that one I think originally was uh, I don't remember it was something like uh, uh, twenty million dollars to get off the ground. Uh, they had millions millions of seeds in there as we speak. It's pretty well completed. It was started two thousand six and it's done as we speak. Okay, so that's that adds to it. Uh, see now we so we have uh, these couple of giant seed vaults. We have all the major nations of the world secretly, not 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 tremendously secret, but uh, for the most part pretty much secret, building these underground facilities now and and filling them. By the way, for the last five years, filling them with the freeze dried uh, survival foods by the thousands of tons. Oh. truckloads after truckloads and we're talking by the way these facilities I'm just back to the United States their facilities that we we've, they've created uh, are uh, so huge that they have uh, 18 wheelers 40 footers drive side by side in the roadways underground and complete railways which are actually magnetic, levitated railway, uh, oh, eight or nine months at that time, into looking into where all this money was going. And I couldn't imagine my wildest dreams uh, where, what, what could go on with that. You just can't, you know, you can't load that up and take it someplace. Uh, like I say, you can't money launder trillions of dollars. Uh, so uh, I, I then, of course, had received constantly receiving information from people all over the uh, different levels of our government and friends of mine out of the intelligence agencies and what have you. And uh, this going back, uh, you know, a full over 25 years. And uh, uh, someone came to me and, uh, and reminded me of the underground facilities that were being built all the same period of time. By the way, the, the funny stuff started seriously about 1983 to 85, which was a period of time when we were into that Iran-Contra stuff. Uh, Ronald Reagan had was president. George Bush, who was really running the show, was vice president. And uh, all of this, uh, a lot of changes in huge projects, Defense Department money, they were talking about doing this uh, Star Wars initiative where they're going to put up this a whole bunch of series of satellites that was going to track uh, when a flea farts in Omaha. They would, could tell you where the flea was located and all that kind of stuff. And they were going to track everything that the Russians or the Red Chinese were going to do. They were going to be able to track it down and all of that. That was all this uh, Star Wars uh, gobbledygook. Um, which I found out later what everything that they did put up in the Star Wars uh, operations, these telescopes and satellites uh, and transmission uh, uh, sensing devices and all of that were actually aimed outwards. They were not aimed at the Earth to keep track of things. They were aimed outward to outer space. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, like I say, it also was a time when they, they started doing what was called um, the continuity of government. They had yes. huge expansions of what was called continuity of government. And that was where these underground facilities got, came, came back to surface. All right? Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about in terms of uh, these, uh, uh, there's over 100 of them in the United States today. And these are entire... Uh, oh, st small cities, so to speak, underground, all over the place in, in America. Uh, and uh, they are specifically survival, 
survival locations or facilities for a limited numbers of people. Uh, although with a hundred of them, and some of them are pretty large, uh, there a lot of people could be underground and live under there for quite a while. Um, so at that point, uh, and and I was really at very much up up to speed on these, so to speak, because going back to the 90s, I had myself uh, with a, a friend of mine snuck down under uh, the Denver airport, which for many years had been rumored to be uh, a, a huge underground operation, a huge facility like we're talking about. And on the uh, very first week that it was opened in 1995, uh, I had already been bombarded with people telling me what was going on underground there. And, and I didn't even understand it, couldn't imagine really at that point what they were talking about. Uh, why would we be building giant uh, underground like, uh, like rats and moles under the ground uh, uh, at a tremendous cost factor? So I did sneak down underneath, and I got pictures um, way back in the 90s. Uh, but that was something I, I was involved with, uh, investigations with Sonny Bono uh, on drugs and uh, smuggling right out of the White House and investigating it with him uh, and uh, two or three other people. I was working with Henry Gonzalez on some other bank fraud things that we were uh, trying to chase at that time. So these crazy pictures of underground facilities was something that I had just put on the back shelf and, and hadn't gotten into in terms of trying to find out what was really going on. So uh, I, I then moved into a, a, a situation where I was trying to figure out uh, what would it be that would cause us to, to be so concerned with the need for underground survival facilities at a tremendous cost. So someone said to me, how about the stuff that's going on in China and in Russia and uh, Red China and in uh, England, uh, the Europe, a couple of European countries at the same time? And I said, well, you know, what are you talking about? And they said, no, the underground same situation, underground hideouts. So apparently the Russians, 2000... Basically, for those folks who don't know who I am, I've been doing congressional and senatorial investigations uh, for uh, uh, probably 20 years, basically chasing corrupted persons in our government. Uh, and that started out a long time ago. I won't go into all of the background of how I got involved with that, but I became a federal witness in uh, that 1985-87 period of time with the Iran-Contra inquiries, for those of you that are old enough to uh, recall that, as a matter of fact, because that's been about 25 years ago, I guess, at this time. And uh, I had gotten mixed up into the middle of uh, Iran-Contra Central Intelligence uh, supplying of weapons and drugs, et cetera, et cetera, with, uh, by simply merging my company with a, an existing company in Atlanta, Georgia, that in fact was uh, a covert front for supplying of weapons for all these uh, random wars that the intelligence agencies of the United States like to maintain worldwide, and of course, lining the pockets of all those guys that are supplying the weapons on the behalf of our, uh, uh, what I refer to the secret government, so to speak, has nothing to do with the, the people that you think are running uh, old uh, the United States. And uh, it's, um, uh, so th that's been a real roller coaster ride for myself. What happened was that I was, uh, uh, like I say, we merged our company. All of a sudden, I was in the middle of this stuff, and um, uh, I couldn't believe what was going on. These guys, including major generals, etc., coming in and out of my company, which, by the way, was a toy company. And the idea was for them to use the toy company as a covert front 
for all this crazy stuff that they're doing on a regular basis. And uh, to my surprise, once we got uh, into investigating it, myself and my lawyer, uh, in an attempt to reclaim my business, uh, which they had basically um, taken over and completely stolen, uh, when I got into it, we found out that they do this stuff all the time, uh, that they actually will take companies over and, and use them as reasons for being in, visiting a country or going in and out of countries, et cetera, et cetera, and, and uh, carrying out their um, supplying of the weapons and all. So if you guys have any questions, I would... I would uh, Jump in, please, if you will, if you have uh, anything you want to ask. But uh, the main point of uh, today's program uh, on my side of it is to uh, let people know that there is an extremely radical element that is uh, is, is on the offing, uh, and that is uh, Planet X, which is, of course, and some people call it Nibiru, uh, a couple of years ago, about three years ago, after doing 25 to 27 years of inv investigations into government fraud and theft and, and uh, all of the related bandits that uh, are running the country up there uh, and being involved directly with about eight or ten of some of the biggest investigations in the last um, 20 years, uh, I realized that we were missing huge amounts of money, much more money than what is normally vanishing out of Washington, D.C., into the pockets of those guys that are on the bad side of the fence. Uh, we had gotten used to chasing multi-millions dollars of um, financing that uh, and fraud, fraud, bank fraud, uh, and like I say, the sales of weapons and the exchange for weapons out of, right out of the White House uh, with uh, for with with drug dealers on a huge scale, and we got used to investigating that. But all of a sudden, it dawned on me that uh, we were starting to lose much more money, and I couldn't figure out how that money could, where it could go because we're talking trillions of dollars, not even millions or billions, but a couple of um, major persons in our government had admitted that trillions had disappeared out of their budgets and they had no idea where it was going. You guys there? Are yeah, you guys yeah, still yeah. on the line there, or you fall asleep? Yeah, sorry I lose that. you guys. No, oh, I had my okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I was trying to talk, I was uh, like, Wait a second, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. so, I, I, I didn't mean... Question, man, keep I, going. Excuse me? Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, how... how it, uh, I guess to what level is this still going on today? I mean... Um, okay, well, here's, here was, here's the point. This is what happened. Uh, about uh, This is about three years ago uh, when it... When I had information coming across my desk as it related to this giant sums of money vanishing uh, again uh, not you know no no longer were we talking about a senator or a 